everyone. This is Tim with Online Big Blue bringing you the best in New York Giants sports talk entertainment. Um, we did a video a little while back, and it was titled uh, The Four Players Dave Gettleman Traded Away and What They Were Doing Then for Their Team. We had a really good response to the video, and I wanted to do another one. I wanted to basically do a video and have it be the four players that Dave Gettleman let get away and the ones that the four players that he is going to regret. These are basically four players that he let leave the Giants, either via trade or free agency, and down the road, the players that he is truly going to regret letting go. Number four on the list is going to be Janoris Jenkins. Yes, Janoris is a loudmouth. Yes, the Jackrabbit is vocal. But at 30 years old, he could still play the corner. He could still play against the number one receiver. Was he wrong to basically call out the coach and the defensive coordinator by saying, you need to let me roam, you need to let me be the guy that covers the, you know, the other team's you know, option one? No, he wasn't wrong saying that. The way he said it, eh, yeah, he, he, was, he, he was pretty wrong about the way he said it. Now, I know we're all going back to the comment he made that basically got him waived. Uh, you know what? Players have said worse. Players have done worse. I think that Gettleman was just looking for a reason to get out of the contract, get out of the last year of the contract, and get him off the team. The problem is when you have a corner of Janoris's stature, his ability on the field, I, I think I think Gettleman was looking at it as his ability on the field for a losing team was not worth the hassle off the field. I think it was the same thing when he got dumped Odell. I think that's I think that's what he was thinking when when he dumped Odell. That you know what, it no longer is beneficial to have him on the team because his play on the field no longer is 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 above what he's worth off the field or what he's doing off the field. And honestly, I, I think a lot of problems with Jenkins was is was the coaching staff, was Shermer, was Betcher, was the way they were playing the defensive system, that he was tired of losing. He had one good year when he signed that big contract coming here with all the free agents that year. I, I think he was another one. He was just trying to drive himself out of town. But honestly, his talent and his ability, you know, it's 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 someone that we should never have lost. It's someone that we should have tried to work with, you know, and maybe sat down in a private meeting and said to him, hey, you know what, you listen, you know what? You know, you're right. You should be doing this. But the, is the way it was the way he called out the coaching staff. And it was it was the alleged comment, not the alleged comment, it was the comment that he made, which allegedly got him kicked off the team and got him waived. And I laughed that he went to the Saints because Eli Apple's there. And one of the reasons why they picked him up is because Eli Apple, even though he has a lot of tackles, is having a terrible year. <laughs> I mean, so I mean, they needed to find a replacement to Eli, and of course Eli Apple gets hurt, and, you know, and and then Janoris comes in and he actually played fairly well in the playoff game that they lost, but. He needed we having that veteran presence in the secondary with all the young guys we have, and especially going into year two, I really think we needed him in in the position room, you know, so he could sit down with the guys and say, okay, look for this, look for that, look for this, and look for that. But you know what? I think that is going to be one that Gettleman is going to be like that one. I should never let him go away. Um, our number, our, our number three and number two players, I'm really going to tie them together. Those players are going to be Weston Richburg center. And of course our old buddy, Justin Pugh, ah, offensive guard. Now Weston from 2014 to 2016, he never missed a game. He was always on the field. He played well. He was an anchor on that line. He was he. I mean, he he he. He's basically calling out the blocking schemes. He's calling out the protection. He you know he 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 was Eli's man for three straight years. He had the injury in seventeen, which only limited him to four games. 
So when he came up to free agency, I think that Gettleman looked at him and said, okay, I have a 6'4", 295-pound center who wasn't healthy in 17. You know what? People have that injuries. People have those, you know, no one's ever going to, you know, there are players that that go through their entire career without being injured, but you know what? Injuries do happen, especially when you're playing on that inside line position. So they let him go for the big contract to San Francisco. And I also understand that there were some cap issues involved, but you basically let a guy that was a stud from his rookie year in 14 through 16 and actually played well into 17 before he got hurt and let him go to the 49ers. And what does he do in 2018 for the 49ers? 15 games played, 15 games started. He was out for one game. Pretty durable. And then in the 2019, you know, San Francisco 49ers season, he really anchored that line. He helped Mr. Garoppolo. Now, yes, he did get hurt in late in December, but he did start 13 out of 13 straight games. So, I mean, he he did play 28 games out of a possible 32. I mean, excuse me, 36. Now, why that's not that fantastic, he only missed four games. And again, you you weaken the team and you weaken the line by taking away the anchor, taking a guy, taking away the guy that you know can change the blocking scheme, taking away the guy that can help the rest of the unit itself. And it just kills me that we just let him go for nothing. That you know, Gettleman's supposed to be all into the hog mollies. But you know what? You let one go. And yeah, why why some people may think he's slightly underside for a center, but the way he plays with leverage and how strong he is, that was someone we should have kept around for at least another five, six years. Now, under the same vein, letting go Justin Pugh, offensive guard, number 60, you know, he's number 67 in Arizona. You know, we drafted him back in, when did we? I forget when we drafted him. We drafted him in 2013. Again, he was pretty much an anchor for four years, 16 games, 14 games, 14 games, 11 games. It wasn't, it wasn't until the 17th season that he got hurt. And I, I think, again, that Gettleman looked at him and said, you know what, we're, we're going to let him go. We're going to let him sign that big deal in Arizona. Now, yes, his first year in Arizona, he only played seven games, but he played 16 out of 16 games this year and played well and really helped Kyler Murray. And you could see it. You could see his blocking with Kyler. I I watched a lot of the Arizona games because I really do like Kyler Murray as a player. And Justin was another one that anchored the line. But what really kills me is you, in one year, took out your starting center and one of your guards. You know, you got five guys on a line. You know, you took out two of them. You took out two Players that were very well rounded. I love when Justin came out out of Syracuse and everyone was like, he's got his arms are too short. And I never, un- I've never understood that. His arms are too short. You know what? If you keep, you know, first thing they teach you in pass blockings is, yeah, you should keep your arms up, but you also sometimes need to keep your arms in. You got to keep them underneath the other player. So, you know, and as long as you have the power and the strength, I don't see that. But again, it's another hog molly that Gettleman looked at and said, okay, well, he had an injury. He had, a, he had an injury that season. So we are, again, we are going to take two players out of our starting offensive line and trade them, and not even trade them, let them go away in free agency. And we sit there and wonder why we had such a bad line in 18 and 19. 19, we didn't have as bad as a line as people think. We, we actually ranked pretty good. But 18, we had a terrible line. You take away Pew, you take away Richburg, and there you go. I mean, you know, you could also throw in, what's his name? Uh, uh, Brett Jones, the center. This, he was a uh, all-league center over in Canada. He was the offensive lineman of the year a couple times in Canada. He played a lot of versatility on the line in the same year. You know, next year, we let him go in 19 for like a seventh round draft choice. Oh, no, excuse me, in 18 for a second round ja- draft choice. I mean, for a second, seventh round draft choice to the Vikings. Again, we're taking someone else who was a backup on the line in 17 and shipped him out in 18. 
So we lost Justin, we lost Weston, and we lost Jones. I mean, you, you say you're a hog molly guy, Gettleman, but you take out a lot of your line, a lot of your bulking, a lot of your strength, and you ship them off and send them out of the way. Now, the number one player on this list that I think Gettleman is going to rule the day that he got rid of, and it might surprise some people, and it surprised me a little bit as I was looking at it, it's going to be Odell Beckham Jr. Yeah, we sent him to Cleveland for some draft choices, for Peppers, and why he did not have a great year. He did have 74 receptions, 1,035 yards at 14 yards, a catch and only four touchdowns, but in some, and some, you know, and he just had the incident with, at the at the LSU game and everything else and all the stupidity that he has. But Freddie Kitchens was not the coach for Odell. They needed someone that was going to hold his attention, who was going to command the room, and was going to make him play the way he should play. The dude is only twenty seven years old. You took a star receiver, didn't trade him for a hill of beans because Dexter Lawrence is a good player, but you took a star receiver and, yeah, shipped him off to Cleveland with Baker Mayfield. But imagine what our offense could have looked at with Odell Beckham Jr. and Daniel Jones and Evan Ingram and Darius Slayton on the other side and Sterling Shepard. It would have looked phenomenal. And I think in 2020, I almost guarantee that Odell is going to have a big year, that Odell is going to make the comeback, that Odell is, I don't think he's ever going to screw his head on right because I don't think he's that type of player, but I don't think he's a Ter- uh, Terrell Owens. But I think he's going to put it together. He's going to figure out, you know what, I need to be a professional somewhat, and I need to start playing with some consistency. And I think this year and probably next year that he is going to turn it around and he is going to make Gettleman look like a fool. And that is what I'm predicting. And again, this is Tim with Online Big Blue bringing you the best in New York Giants sports talk and entertainment. And uh, hopefully we're going to have some new videos coming up. We're waiting to see who the offensive coordinator is. And once we have that, we'll do a breakdown of who the coordinator is, what he's going to do to the team, and what he's going to bring to the team. Uh, But until then, like I said, this is Tim with Online Big Blue bringing you the best in New York Giants sports talk and entertainment. And thanks for listening.